1987, the world came together to collectively ban a chemical that was destroying Earth's ozone layer. CFC-11 is one of the most abundant and long-lasting chlorofluorocarbons. It was used in a number of products, including insulation, appliances, and hairspray. But following the Montreal Protocol, the chemical was phased out with production scheduled to end completely by 2010. New research shows that might not be the case. And there's strong evidence that someone, somewhere, is producing the chemical many fought so hard to get rid of. Between 2002 and 2012, the rate of CFC-11's decline was constant and within the pace expected based on the agreements made in the late 80s. But recent measurements show that since 2012, reduction has slowed significantly, and the most likely reason is that someone is producing it again. Researchers took into account other possibilities, such as the demolition of old buildings that still contain CFC-11 residues, changes in the atmospheric patterns that remove chlorofluorocarbons, or accidental production. But none are likely to lead to the significant increase in CFC-11 emissions scientists have observed. I've been making these measurements for more than 30 years, and this is the most surprising thing I've seen. Steven Motzka, a scientist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, told the Washington Post, I was astounded by it, really. When CFCs reach the stratosphere, they're involved in a series of chemical reactions that lead to the destruction of ozone, a chemical that absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun. If the production can be pinpointed and stopped soon, damage to the ozone layer could be minimal. If not, it could set this decades-long global effort back by years. Evidence suggests production is occurring in East Asia, but the location hasn't been pinned down beyond that. They're going to find the culprits. Derwood Zelk, founder of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development, told the Washington Post. This insults everybody who's worked on this for the last 30 years. That's a tough group of people. The research was published this week in Nature. We'll see you next week with more in Gadget Today.